Welcome to the Scale Model Geek, and this week I got all inspired by the brand new movie that's coming out, which is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. This movie is actually one of my favourite superhero movies. The first two movies have been absolutely fantastic and I can't wait to see the third. I'm pretty sure you figured out now that I'm actually making Star-Lord, and this sculpt of Chris Pratt actually looks like Chris Pratt. I think this is going to be a fun build. This is another beautifully detailed sculpt. Really happy with the quality of this. Sadly, I did get a bit of warping during the print process, but a bit of sanding and filing will um, sort that out. And of course, Star-Lord has got his iconic little Walkman. I think this is going to be a fun build. So, let's get stuck into it. Now I'm gluing on the head right at the start because this particular sculpt has got a really funny way of attaching the head. Now I'm assuming when they originally created this sculpt, they thought the beard would actually hide the joint. Sadly, it doesn't. Also, because of my warping during the printing process, I'm going to have to glue on the back of this jacket straight onto uh, his torso. Because I've got to be feeling to do in this bit. Now to fill up the neck joints and the coat, just a bit of resin there and some UV light. Unfortunately the face is going to be a bit of a pain to paint, but at least the neck joint will be great. There it is. Looks quite good. Now for the base colour of his coat, I'm using this German Red Brown from Vallejo. Off camera, I did give Star-Lord an undercoat, and I'm just doing a nice even coat of this Red Brown. And I really, really like this colour for his coat. Now what I've done here is added a couple drops into the little pot of my airbrush, and started giving him some deep shadows. And I'm just doing these in between the creases of his coat. And then I added a couple drops of the white to the red brown. And I hit all the high areas of the creases. As an experiment, I thought I'd try and spray his arms on an angle with that highlight. And it really picked up the highlights really well. Very happy with the way this came out. And now for his pants, I'm using some of this chocolate brown, also from Vallejo. And don't ask me why, but I decided to brush this on instead of spraying it. Took a little bit longer, but it still got a good result. And these are his boots. Now Star Lord is actually one eighth scale. Now what I did, I grabbed some of that chocolate brown, added a couple drops of white to it, and started dry brushing the highlights. I also did the same thing with the jacket, grabbed the red brown, added a couple of drops of white and started dry brushing this as well. Now all I'm trying to do is just uh, get some of the beautiful detail that's in the jacket and get that to pop out a bit more. The shading in the jackets come up really well. Really happy with that. I'm using this deck tan as the base colour for his t-shirt, which I will then later on dry brush with the white. And now onto his skin tones. I'm using a combination of this light flesh, basic flesh, and the sand and I've combined those to create my base colour. I wanted to try something a little bit different, experiment, but I kind of wasn't happy with that in the end. So, back onto the garments, I'm using this red for his scarf. It took me a couple of seconds to realise that this is actually part of his scarf, but after doing some research, I couldn't find any reference whatsoever to show his scarf it was actually this big, or this fluffy. So, didn't have much of a choice, I had to paint the whole thing. And to dry brush that red, I'm using another red. And this is a vermilion from Vallejo. 
Now I'm using the red rather than adding the couple of white drops to the um, red simply because I really like the tones it gives me. And for his straps, I just added a drop of black to the brown, or rather chocolate brown. As I watch this video back, I find it interesting how during this process, watching the video, I can actually see the progression of the figure. The figure coming to life. Whereas when I'm actually building it, I'm so focused at one section at a time that I don't actually see the overall picture. For his boots, I'm just using a flat black. Nice even coat of that. And also his weapons. Once those parts are blocked in, I then add a bit of highlights with some of this Panzer Grey from Ammo, and I start dry brushing the leather areas with it. And his gun metal, also from Ammo, I use this to dry brush his little rocket boots, all little rockets on the boots, and also his blaster. That really pops out the detail. I use some of this light metal, also from Ammo, and I use that on his metal sections on his garments. And just for a bit of visual interest, I use some of this metallic grey from Tamiya, and I hit some of the other metal areas. I'm doing this just to break it up a bit. Like I said, a bit of visual interest. And with his legs and his boots done, time to glue them together. And I'm just using a bit of super glue. Now I decided to use the beige red and the sand, because I really hated the base colour. It was way too pink for me in the end. So I gave a nice coat of this uh, mixture. Much happy with that. And some of this chocolate brown and some off-white for his beard and hair. I did go back and fix up his mo and his beard. Wasn't quite right here, but I did fix it. Now for his eyes, some of this off-white. And for his pupils, I'm using some of this light green because he has green eyes. Then once I've done those, I then shape them, and I go back to that flesh colour that I mixed. And there he is. Can't tell they're green, but they are green. Now to start adding shading to his face, or his skin tones, I'm using some of this black red, and a bit of glazed medium, and I'm going to combine them with the flesh tones that I've already created, and start putting in some of the shadow areas, and also highlights. And I'm just running down the side of his nose, and then some highlights on the top of his forehead, on his nose, on his cheeks. And all I'm doing is just adding my various shades, then blending them in. You may have also noticed that off camera, I actually painted his shoulder pads. They were the wrong colour, they weren't a red, but they were more of a brown leathery colour. Now for his hair, I'm just adding some uh, highlights to the very tips. Wasn't 100% happy with it, but I will practice. I personally don't have any hair, so painting hair is a mystery to me. Now with those two sections all completed, time to glue them together. I'm just using Aerodite here, which is a 5 minute epoxy glue. And back to the old cheap soup glue that I have. I just glue on the other bits and pieces, his arms and his rocket and his backpack. And to get some more of that detail to pop a bit more, I'm using some of this panel line accent colour from Tamiya. This stuff is really awesome. All I do is put a little drop in a corner and it just flows through the crevice. And if you haven't already, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and share. That would be greatly appreciated. And with the accent colour all done, Star Lord's just about finished. Now it's onto the base. 
Now I've cut and glued these pieces of XPS foam together. Now I did use PVA glue to glue those three portions together, so I had to leave it overnight to dry. I'm just marking out the areas that I want to chop away. Just making sure I've got plenty of room there. And I'm carefully, meticulously and precisely marking out a pedestal for him. Yeah, alright then. Maybe it's not that meticulous or precise. Now just using a box cutter, I start hacking at the foam just to give me a rough shape of what I need. Now make sure when you're using a box cutter, you're very careful. You don't want to slice your fingers off. And once I've got the rough shape that I'm after, I then use the box cutting knife and start breaking off pieces because I want a really rough edge to it. Rather than having sharp, precise cuts, I need to get that texture there. I'm also trying to give it that rocky terrain feel to it. And still keep it aesthetically pleasing. For a rock. Now normally at this stage I would mix some plaster of Paris and some water and give the whole thing a base coat of that. But this time around I really want to keep that texture of the foam so I'm just sealing everything with this PVA glue. So when I actually paint the base, it's going to give me this really interesting rock texture to it. Whereas if I'd used the plaster of Paris mix, it would have given me a smoother edge to it. And in this particular build, it's not what I was after. And to add a bit more detail, I'm using some of the foam that I chopped off earlier and shaped them into little boulders and PVA glued them into place. And off camera, I gave another coat of the PVA glue to seal those little rocks. It's now starting to look like something. And time to add the base colour. So I'm using some of this acrylic paint. As I paint it on, I make sure I get a nice solid coverage of this black. And then I use my super duper bent brush. And this helps me get into some of the hard to reach areas. And that's my solid black lifeless piece of stuff. So off camera, I just used a bit of undercoat and sprayed that directly from top down to give me some highlights and some shadows. And then I grabbed some of my brown acrylic paint, added some water, really thinned it down quite heavily and covered the whole base with this concoction. It's not really a concoction, it's just watered down paint. And using a makeup brush, I dabbed up most of it. And then I used some green acrylic paint, did the same thing, watered it down. The only difference this time around, I didn't cover the whole base with it, just certain areas. And I got experimental and decided to use yellow as well. You kind of bling it with the green. And that's what it looks like when it's all dry. But it still looks a bit flat. So what I need to do is add a bit more highlighting with some dry brushing. So I'm using this light sand from Ammo. And I'm going to hit the whole base with it. And this is when it really starts to come alive. And the dry brushing is really bringing out that interesting texture of the foam. It kind of looks rocky. Now off camera, I've added some of these pins to Star-Lord's feet just to give him a bit more support, a bit of strength when I put him into the foam. Because if I just glued his feet straight onto the base, I don't think there would have been much strength. And back to this five minute aerodite. And slide him straight in there. Now I did put some of that aerodite at the bottom of his feet as well. 
and I bet you you thought that I'd forgotten about the Walkman. No, here it is. Now I didn't have the right colour, so I had to use some of this light blue, and I mixed that together with this steel from Vallejo to give it that metallic -y finish to it. And with that all done, all I had to do was glue the Walkman into place, and because you people have been so wonderful, let's go and check out the hero shots. <laughs> 